This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Uncle Remus by Joel Chandler Harris Chapter 34 The Sad Fate of Mr. Fox Now, then, said Uncle Remus, with unusual gravity, as soon as the little boy, by taking his seat, announced that he was ready for the evening's entertainment to begin. Now, then, this year tale what I'm a-goin' fur to give ye is the last row of stumps, sure. This year's where old Brer Fox loses breath, and he ain't find it no more down to this day. Did he kill himself, Uncle Remus? The little boy asked with a curious air of concern. Hold on there, honey, the old man exclaimed with a great affectation of alarm. Hold on there. Wait, give me room. I don't want to tell you no story. If you keep shoving me forward, I might get some of the facts mixed up among the cells. You got to give me room, and you got to give me time. The little boy had no other premature questions to ask, and after a pause, Uncle Remus resumed. Well, then, one day Br'er Rabbit go to Br'er Fox's house, he did, and he put up mighty poor mouth. He say his old woman's sick, and his chillin's cold, and the fire done gone out. Br'er Fox, he feel bad bout this, and he took and supply Br'er Rabbit with a chunk of fire. Br'er Rabbit see Br'er Fox cookin' some nice beef, and his mouth begun to water. But he take the fire, he did, and he put out towards home. But presently here it came back, and he say the fire done gone out. Br'er Fox loud that he want to invite to dinner, but he don't say nothin'. And by and by, Br'er Rabbit, he up and say, says he, "'Br'er Fox, where you get so much nice beef?' says he. And then Br'er Fox, he up and spawn, says he, "'You can come to my house tomorrow if your folks ain't too sick, and I can show you where you can get plenty beef more nicer than this year,' says he. Well, show sure enough, the next day fotch Br'er Rabbit, and Br'er Fox say, says he, there's a man down yonder by Miss Meadows's what got a heap of fine cattle, and he got a cow named Bouquet, says he, and you just go and say Bouquet, and she'll open her mouth, and you can jump in and get just as much meat as you can tote, says Br'er Fox, says he. Well, I'll go long, says Br'er Rabbit, says he, and you can jump in fuss, and then I'll come follerin' after, says he. With that, they put out, and they went promenadin' round mong the cattle, they did, to a by and by they struck up with the one they was after. Brer Fox, he up he did, and holler, Bouquet, and the cow flung her mouth wide open. Show sure enough, in they jump, and when they got there, Brer Fox, he say, says he, You can cut most anywheres, Brer Rabbit, but don't cut round the hazlet, says he. And Br'er Rabbit, he holler back, he did. I'm a get me out a roastin' piece, says he. Roastin', bacon, fryin', says Br'er Fox, says he. Don't get too nigh to Hazlitt, though, says he. They cut, and they coughed, and they coughed, and they cut. And whilst they was cuttin' and carvin', and slashin' way, Br'er Rabbit, he took and hacked into the Hazlitt, and with that, down fell the cow dead. Now den, says Br'er Fox, we are gone sure, says he. What we going do, says Br'er Rabbit, says he. I get the mall, says Br'er Fox, and you jump into gall, says he. Next morning, here come the man what the cow belonged to, and he asks who killed Bouquet. Nobody don't say nothing. Then the man say he'll cut her open and see, and then he whirl in and twa'n't no time for he had her entrails spread out. Br'er Rabbit he crope out of the gall and say, says he, Mister Man, oh Mister Man, I I'll tell you who kill your cow. You look in the mall and there you'll find him, says he. With that, 
The man took a stick and lay him down on the mall so hard that he killed Brer Fox stone dead. When Brer Rabbit see Brer Fox was laid out for good, he make like he mighty sorry, and he up and axed the man for Brer Fox's head. The man say he ain't keerin', and then Brer Rabbit took and brung it to Brer Fox's house. There he see old Miss Fox, and he tell her dat he done fotch her some nice beef what her old man sought her, and she ain't got to look at it twill she go to eat it. Brer Fox's son was named Toby, and Brer Rabbit tell Toby fur to keep still whilst his mammy cooked the nice beef what his dad beside him. Toby, he was mighty hungry, and he look in the pot he did whilst the cooking was going on and there he see his daddy's head, and with that he sot up a howl and told his mammy. Miss Fox, she get mighty mad when she find she cookin' her old man head, and she called up the dogs, she did, and sicked em on Br'er Rabbit. And old Miss Fox and Toby and the dogs, they pushed Br'er Rabbit so close that he had to take a holler tree. Miss Fox, she tell Toby for to stay there and mind Br'er Rabbit while she goes and gets the axe, and when she gone, Br'er Rabbit, he told Toby if he go to the branch and get him a drink of water, then he give him a dollar. Toby, he put out, he did, and bring some water in his hat, but by the time he got back, Br'er Rabbit done out and gone. Old Miss Fox, she cut and cut to down come the tree, but no Br'er Rabbit dare. Then she laid the blame on Toby, and she say she going to lash him. And Toby, he put out and run, and the old woman after him. By and by, he come up with Br'er Rabbit, and sot down fur to tell him how twas. And whilst he was a-settin' there, here comes old Miss Fox a-slippin' up and grabbin' both. Then she tell him what she gwine do. Br'er Rabbit she gwine to kill. And Toby, she gonna lamb if it's the last act. Then Br'er Rabbit says, says he, If you please, ma'am, Miss Fox, lay me on the grindstone and ground off my nose so I can't smell no more when I'm dead. Miss Fox, she took this to be a good idea, and she fotched both of them to the grindstone and set them up on it so that she could grind off Br'er Rabbit's nose. Then Br'er Rabbit, he up and say, says he, If you please, ma'am, Miss Fox, Toby he can turn the handle whiles you go after some water for to wet the grindstone, says he. Course, soon as Br'er Rabbit see Miss Fox go after the water, he jump down and put out, and this time he get clean away. And was that the last of the rabbit, too, Uncle Remus? The little boy asked with something like a sigh. Don't push me too close, honey, responded the old man. Don't shove me up in no corner. I don't want to tell you no stories. Some say that Br'er Rabbit's old woman died from eating some pison weed, and that Br'er Rabbit married old Miss Fox, and some say not. Some tells one tale, and some tells another. Some say that from that time forward the rabbits and the foxes make friends and stay so. Some say they kept on quarreling. It look like it's mixed. Let them tell you what knows. That what I years, you gets it straight like I yet it. There was a long pause, which was finally broken by the old man. It's kin to rules for you to be nodding off, honey. By and by you'll drop off and I'll have to tote you up to the big house. I hear that baby crying. By and by, Miss Sally'll fly up and be a hollering at you. Oh, uh, I wasn't asleep, the little boy replied. I was just thinking. Well, that's different, said the old man. If you climb up on my back, he continued, speaking softly, I expect I ain't too old for to be your horse from year to the house. Many and many's the time that I toted your Uncle James dat away, and Mars James was heavier sot than what you is. 
end of tail.